And if you just do that, you will build muscle. There's no way you can't because the muscle grows when it has to. Muscle grows as an adaptive response. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how to build muscle on a fruit-based diet because a lot of people say it can't be done, but clearly it can be done. I just got a new personal best. I went from 20 to 21 pull-ups on a fruit-based diet. And if you were unable to build muscle on a fruit-based diet, how would I be able to do 20 pull-ups in the first place, let alone go from 20 pull-ups to 21 pull-ups? In this video, we're gonna break down the step-by-step -step protocol for building muscle on a fruit-based diet, because it's very effing simple. It's why there's a lot of dumb people out there who have big, big muscles, because it's they found the, the simple way to train, and they know how to build big muscles with a simple approach. On really whatever kind of diet you want, whether it's a fruit-based diet or a carnivore diet, whatever, I happen to do on a fruit-based diet, for those of the people out there who say it can't be done, who say you can't build muscle on a fruit-based diet, then how am I doing it? How am I doing it? How, am, how is it possible for me to, I've got a pull-up record just now, I got a bench press record a couple days ago, and I got a bicep curl record a, a week earlier. So how is that possible? It's just by following the three steps I'm gonna share with you right here. So number one, in order to be successful with this, your goal here, specifically if your goal is to build a lean, sexy, attractive physique that looks good in the mirror, that looks good on the beach, that looks good on magazine covers, You've, you've got to be consistent with your training for a matter, for a period of, of months, if not years. It depends on how much background you have. I started training when I was 18. I'm 32 now. I have not been consistent from age 18 to now. If I, if I had been, I'd be much bigger. My body would look insane. I've been consistent for about two and a half, three years. Up until that point, from just 18 to about three years ago, I was wishy-washy. I was one foot in, one foot out. I, I'd, I'd go for stints where I'd cons be consistent, and I'd go for stints where I was not consistent. And I would mix up my training so much, I wouldn't stick to one thing. For a big period of that time, from ages 19 to about 26, 27, I trained full-time for triathlon. I did hardly any weight training whatsoever. I purely did swim, bike, and run all day long. And I lost a ton of muscle. I just I leaned out to being like a little twig, a little Kenyan marathon runner looking dude. So that's tip number one. You gotta be consistent specifically with lifting weights, either body weight or weights, like heavy objects in the gym or at your house, in your garage, whatever. Okay, that's number one, consistency. And a tip to be consistent is to track. I asked my, I asked the strongest dude I know, Mike Velocity, who also happens to be living on a fruit-based diet, or a vegan diet, Mike Velocity, the strongest dude out there. I asked him what his secret was. How the hell did he get so strong? He's able to bench press twice his body weight. This guy's like freakishly strong. I asked him, how did he get so freakishly strong? And he said, he has a journal. He showed me his diary. He says, I've been tracking every single workout for the past 10 years. And I was like, holy shit. And he's like, yeah, you look, I just improve, improve, improve every time. I just take, take note of what I'm doing. I take note of all my training and, and find habits and find patterns in my training and, and find ways of improving that way. So I heard him say that and I didn't take his advice. I was like, oh, that's cool, but it sounds like a pain in the ass. I don't want to track. I don't want to carry a journal around everywhere with me. But then I realized I don't have to carry a journal around with me. There's an app on my phone, and I'm always on my phone. And in between sets, I always grab my phone anyway. And I noticed that I started to get better on certain exercises. But I was like, oh, I might as well track this down, write it down so I don't forget. So I just started putting my note app. And I was like, hey, there must be a specific app for this that tracks it. And lo and behold, there is. There's lots of them. I use one called FitNotes here on Android. You can probably get a good one on Apple as well. So every time I work out, every single time I work out, I track my lifts. And this brings me to my second point, my second tip for training. You always aim, every time you walk in the gym, your aim should always be to improve on last week. Improve on last week, improve on last week. In some way, shape, or form. Meaning, you're either gonna add an extra rep to a certain exercise, like for example, I went from 20 pull-ups to 21 pull-ups, add an extra rep, or you wanna add at least a pound to that exercise. So for example, if I'm doing 21 pull-ups next week as well, I'm not improving, I'm not going 21 to 22, I'm going 21 to 21, but I'll add a pound, I'll put a weight vest around me, I'll add a one pound plate to it. And if you can just do that every single week, and sometimes you can't improve by a pound because the gym only has two and a half pound plates or five pound plates, that's fine. Just try to beat that certain record that you can do with that weight. Always try to improve. I go as so far as to create different exercises within a certain type of exercise to make it easier for me to improve. So what do I mean by that? Well, a lot of people will just go to the gym and they'll be like, okay, I wanna improve on my shoulder press, right? I wanna improve my shoulder press. Well, for me, I'm like, okay, well, what if I, what if there's like a time where I can't improve on my shoulder press with, with the barbell, the barbell shoulder press? What if I get stuck and I, I plateau on that for a couple weeks? Well, I added in a, a new type of exercise to my FitNotes app and I call it um, barbell press to the eye. 
So I don't go down all the way for a certain exercise for this one. I go down just to my eye. When the bar's at my eye, I push back up. So I can get a PB on that exercise instead. So if I'm not improving on the full range, maybe I can at least improve on this range. And then I also went so far as to uh, add in the dumbbell version. So rather than just the barbell overhead press, trying to get records on that, some weeks I don't want to train barbell. Some weeks I'll, I'll just grab the dumbbells and I'll, I'll do the, the overhead press with the, with the dumbbells. Now, you see how I rotate my hand like this? Like it starts neutral grip and then it finishes like that? Well, I used to always train shoulder press like this. But I'm like, what if I don't want to train this one week? And what if I get pla what if I plateau on this exercise? I can't seem to get any stronger. I can't add an extra rep. I can't add an extra pound because it goes up in the five pound increments. Well, I added a new, I created a new exercise called neutral rotation bottom shoulder press or something. But it means I start at the bottom like this. And as I come up, I twist. So it's a completely different exercise. And I also have another one just called neutral grip shoulder press. So th but the reason I'm telling you this is because by adding multiple different types of exercises like that, that, that mimic and, and are very similar to the other type of exercise, I can at least hit the same muscle group, but it gives me another opportunity to get a personal record. Every week I go in there, I always aim to get a personal best. And I even go as so far as to have personal bests for 100 reps. I have a 100 rep personal best best on, on incline bench press, 100 rep personal best on flat bench press, 100 reps on squats, right? So if I'm not feeling like I want to get like the all-time strongest for 12 reps today or all-time strongest for, 50, for 15 reps today, which I usually train within like the, the 8 to 15 rep range, that's like my, my favorite type of rep range, 8 to 15. Sometimes I go as low as 6, sometimes I go as high as 20. Every now and then though, I will go and I'll be like, okay, what's my 30 rep max today? What's my 50 rep max today? What's my 100 rep max today? And so if you don't have records to break, start setting records. Every time you go to the gym for the next couple months, your goal should be to set records across the board. Set records for the neutral grip shoulder press. Set records for the barbell shoulder press. Set records for the, for the dumbbell um, bench press. Set records for the barbell bench press. Set records for... 20 rep squats. So just set a bunch of records over the next couple months. Get a baseline for where you're at. And then every time you go to the gym for the next 20 years, try to improve upon those. And if you do that, you will get stronger. Now, this brings me to my third and final point for this video. And that is not only do you want to be consistent, not only do you want to be trying to improve by a pound or an extra rep each week. And if you just do that, you will build muscle. There's no way you can't because the muscle grows when it has to. Muscle grows as an adaptive response. So if you get stronger, you will grow muscle. That's barn on that is how it works. You cannot get stronger without building muscle. You cannot get stronger without building muscle. Muscle will develop, muscle will grow when you get stronger. And the way to get stronger is by doing what I just said, being consistent and aiming to improve each week. But it becomes even easier when you do this. It becomes even easier when you allow yourself enough time to recover. And most people do not do this. Most people are working out way too much. You got to work out maximum. If you're a natural lifter with no steroids, which there's a lot of people on Instagram and YouTube who claim to be natural, but they're actually not. They're actually taking steroids. And you can always tell someone's taking steroids when they're way bigger than everyone else and they're way leaner than everyone else at the same time. So if you see someone who's freakishly big and they got tons of veins everywhere, they're on steroids. Most likely. Most likely. And there's a lot of even fake vegan natties out there as well. Anyways, if you're a natural lifter like I am, you don't take steroids and the only supplements you take is freaking B12 and creatine and zinc and stuff like that, natural stuff. You got to work out three times a week. You got to work out no more than three times a week. The only other exercise, the only other workouts you should be doing besides strength training, if you're working out more than three times a week, is like some long walks or some, some runs or something. Like today's Saturday, I like to go for a, there's a 5K race, park run up near my house. Um, I like to run 5K, but once a week I hop on the rowing machine once a week. I get some cardio in there. I go for some runs. Every now and then I sign up for an ultra marathon and try and do that as well, but it's super infrequent. 99% of my training is strength training. And I do it three times a week. And my workouts are only 30 to 45 minutes max. Generally 30 minutes, 45 minutes max. Unless I'm dinking around at the gym with my friend, in which case I'll stay there for maybe an hour and a half. It's like some socializing stuff. 30, 45 minutes max is all you need. And each exercise, I'm doing one, maybe two sets. I was at the gym just two days ago, I got a personal best on incline bench press. I did one set and I was done chest for the day. That's it. I'm good to go. I'm going to come back stronger. The other day, I did pull-ups. I got I did one set of pull-ups and I got 20 reps. And I was like, that is a solid workout. I'm good for today for the back. That's all I did. I came back today and I got 21 all-time PB. That's it. So if I had nuked my back, if I had done like five sets of back that day, I'd still be recovering today. I'd still be sore today. 
sure, I might try for a PB in, in a few days' time or something, and I might get it, but why would I need to wait that long to get the PB when I could just do one set, recover a lot faster, and get PBs faster? Would you rather get personal best faster, like week over week over week, or would you have to? Would you rather get personal best like once a month because you're so freaking sore all the time and you can't even go for a PB? Aim to work out no more than three times a week when it comes to strength. No more than 45 minutes per workout. No more than five exercises per workout. And no more than two sets per exercise. Unless it's like an accessory exercise like like shoulder flies or something, in which case you could do like five sets of those because it's a tiny little muscle or like wrist curls or calf raises or something. If it's like an accessory movement like that, you can do you know, five sets, whatever. But if it's like a, a key lift, if it's a, if it's a squat, a pull-up, a bench press, something like that, then you probably only want to do one or two sets max. If it's bicep curls, same thing, one or two, two sets max, maybe three, because it's just biceps or triceps extensions, maybe three, but for the most part, just one to two sets is all you need. Go to failure on your, or close to failure at least, go for personal best on the first exercise of your first set. That's... The first exercise of your first set is the only important lift of the whole freaking workout as far as I see it. Because the whole goal is, of going to the gym is to level up, be stronger than you were last week. So you want to take all that energy that you would normally put into a 45 minute workout, fuck that, put it into that first set of that first exercise and get that personal best. Now granted, you should probably do a warm up set, maybe even a couple warm up sets before you do that first one. Get really psyched up, put some good music in, whatever if you want, if that's your thing. And then smash it. Smash that first exercise, that first set, whether you're doing 8 rep max or 6 rep max or 12 rep max or 100 rep max, whatever. Just get the freaking PB. Your job should be, you should be a PB hunter. That's your job, PB hunter. I'm going to get a shirt that says PB hunter. And you go to that gym, your job is to get a personal best. You're a personal best hunter. That's your job. All right. First set. The first exercise, you get the PB. After that, everything else is gravy. Everything else is cherry on top. After that, you know what you can do? You can spend the rest of the workout maintaining, like doing what you did last week on all these other exercises, if you want, if you can, if, you, if you're capable of that, because you might be weakened by that first set, that first exercise. Or you could just almost go through the motions and just maintain, just enjoy the process. Just enjoy, the, be present and, and, and just enjoy the feel of, of all those different exercises that you do. Or you could go ahead and set some new ones if you want as well. But uh, yeah, I, the only set I really care about, the only one I'm like a attached to in a way is that first set of that first exercise. And I am strategic with what that one is. I go in there and I cherry pick. I'm like, which one can I get a personal best on today? Sometimes I don't know. Like today I didn't know I was going to get a personal best on that. I, I really believed in myself, but I didn't know for sure if I could. I mean, I barely got it. But I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to devote today to getting 21 pull-ups. Could have, I could have devoted today to shoulder press or bench press or, or something else, some other exercise like reverse row or something. But like, no, I'm going to devote it to getting a pull-up PB. So my body's going to keep looking better and better and better and better. And I guess I'll make another video about this, but if you want to actually see muscle, you want to see definition, you want to actually look good in the mirror, you got to cut the body fat. There's so many guys at the gym, so many chicks at the gym, they have so much muscle, they're so strong, but they're so, they got so much body fat on them that you can't even see the muscle, it doesn't even look that great. Then you got other people who are nowhere near as strong as those people, but they're way more shredded, they're way leaner, and they look incredible. They look like they could be on a magazine cover. They look, they look insane just because they're lean. So if you're doing all this hard work in the gym, but you're overeating, you're eating too many calories, you're not gonna be able to reap the rewards if, if one of your rewards that you're looking for is to look good in the mirror. So if you're lifting weights, but you're still not happy with how you look in the mirror, you gotta dial in the diet, and that's the video I'll make next. I'll link the video below when it's up. So if you see this video, diet video isn't up yet, comment below where's the diet video, and I'll link it in the description. That's it for now. Peace out, much love, adios.